Let's talk about Street Fighter. Street Fighter is probably the biggest traditional fighting game franchise on the planet. Most people who even know a tiny bit about video games will be able to recognize characters like Ryu, Ken, and Chun-Li. They're all even in Fortnite right now. Uh, apart from Ken, he's off doing something else. Capcom recently announced the newest installment in the Street Fighter franchise, being, of course, Street Fighter 6. They only showed Ryu's foot and Luke's veiny arm, though, so I'm not that excited. Ah! Ah! What the f- Whoa! Okay, I'm excited now. Capcom have been going up full steam ahead with the marketing train, releasing so much information about this game. Like, holy crap, Capcom, you need to calm down. But there's some things that they haven't talked about yet. There's like a Capcom show in like an hour. I'm kind of gambling that this script works then, so, you know, pray for me. Good news! They didn't show anything. There is a few things that this game is going to need to have on launch if we want it to succeed. Capcom have had this problem in the past where their previous fighting games didn't do well because of the state that they launched in. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite bombed hard for a Capcom fighter due to different reasons. Why the fuck does she look like that? And Street Fighter V on launch was an absolute mess that turned a bunch of consumers off. So I want to go over what we know about Street Fighter VI and talk about the things that hopefully Capcom will avoid so that the game is successful. Because from what we've seen, this game looks crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's go through the stuff that Capcom has given us. I'm sorry if the footage is repeating itself, by the way. I don't have access to a lot of footage, so I'm basically just going to be stealing it all from the trailers that they've dropped. So the game's got five characters that we know of right now. Ryu, Chun-Li, Guile, and newcomers, Luke and Jamie. Well, Luke technically isn't a newcomer, but... Nah, he's a newcomer. Let's just ignore that. While the old characters still have basically the same moveset from what they've had in previous games, they have new features to spice up their gameplay, with Ryu having a mini install state that powers up his moves, and Chun-Li becoming a stance character. What the fuck? Every character has access to two different bars. You've got the super gauge and the drive gauge. The super gauge is only used for super moves. With the more bars you have letting you access stronger supers. The drive gauge is used for five separate functions. Good god. You got drive impact, parry, rush, reversal, and maximum overdrive! <laughs> Most of the options that you have available to you can be seen as parallels to different things from previous Street Fighters. Drive Impact, that's a focus attack. Drive Reversal, that's an alpha counter or a V reversal. Overdrive, those are EX moves. Drive Rush is your focus attack dash cancel. Let's fucking go! And Drive Parry is... Uh, it's a parry, I don't know what you want me to say. When the drive bar is empty, you entered an exhausted state where you can be stunned when hit with a drive impact in the corner. It looks sick. The way that these systems are intertwined looks like you're going to be making a lot of decisions on the fly about what moves you should use, when you should use them, and why you should use them based on how much meter you have left in the drive gauge. Also, perfect parry looks so sick. Oh my god. It's hard to critique the combat without actually playing the game. So I'm not going to. It looks good on paper, and that's all I can say about it. I do have to bring something up, however. There's a mode known as Modern Controls. This mode has four buttons, light, medium, heavy, and special, with simple inputs for special moves instead of motion inputs. Hadouken with a single button. <laughs> now, when I first saw this, I reacted like a normal person would. However, after reassurance from Capcom, my worries have been put to rest. The main thing I was worried about was that how it might limit characters' movesets. If you want a character to be able to be played in a simple input method and a classic one, with them having the same amount of special moves across the input methods, everyone in the cast would be limited to a maximum of four special moves. Now, it's not uncommon for Street Fighter characters to have four or less special moves in their kit, with characters like Guile being stuck at only two special moves for literally years, but it made me worry that more complex characters like Set wouldn't be able to be added to the game and Returning characters with more than four special moves would have their move list cut down. However, Capcom has stated several times that classic mode is the way to go to have full control over your character. So, from the sound of it, modern mode gives you a nerfed version of the character with less normals and less special moves. Maybe. And classic mode gives you full control over your character, which is honestly a really good way to go about adding this mode. I do have one question though. How are charged characters gonna work? Like, are we gonna have Guile on the 3DS throwing sonic booms while walking forward? Like, they haven't really explained this one yet. Either way, Capcom looks like they're doing a good job, and they've basically won me over on this one. 
As for things out of the actual fighting game, we have an open world mode. What the fuck? Yeah, so Capcom just decided that they're gonna make what could possibly be one of the best single player experiences in any fighting game ever. They seem to be taking notes out of them fighting Herd's notebook by having a different mode with a different gameplay style that links fights together. However, instead of it being a 2D RPG, it looks like it's gonna be an open world where you can go and fight people. We don't know a lot about this mode, but there's a chance for them to do something really cool when it comes to teaching players how to actually fight your opponents. Have an early level AI that does nothing but jump at you and go in for sweeps to teach players of consciousness how to anti-air and punish sweeps. Have one that focuses on zoning to teach players how to deal with fireball spam. Hell, you could even have it that it teaches players the concept of shimmies and okies if you really wanted to go ham with it. This mode has a lot of potential and I'm excited to see what Capcom does for it. Hopefully they don't fuck it up. Finally, we have the teaser for the online system, which we're going to come back to this one. And that's about everything we know of right now. So let's move on to the stuff that I'd like to see. What about the lakes? Who the fuck are you? You've got to talk about the lakes, Gecko. I mean, you can't trust everything you see on the internet, but... But Capcom confirmed it, look! What the... As residents of Metro City, we've all seen things that we weren't supposed to see. We appreciate the positive reactions. Thank you for the support. Fuck, that's rough, buddy. If you haven't seen the leaks yet, then don't worry. You can stay spoiler-free by going to this time card. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to be spoiled about everything in the game, because I woke up one day and BAM! It was all over my Twitter timeline. So, if you want the opportunity to not have that happen to you, I won't judge you. I would also like to be in that position. Alright, for the rest of us, let's quickly discuss the rest of the cast, I guess. <laughs> So, of course, the big one is the full roster that has been leaked. You got a bunch of the World Warriors and some Street Fighter Five characters like Rashid, Ed, and- YES! LET'S FUCKING GO! Jerry looks so fucking cool! <laughs> oh my god, she got a patch back for a default outfit! Let's go! There's also a bunch of newcomers and... They are definitely Street Fighter characters. I like this guy. He's dripped as fuck. Let's go, JP. Now, honestly, I absolutely love basically all the redesigns. You can tell the characters have aged up and are at different stages in their life. Kami finally has actual clothes on. Akuma looks menacing as ever. Jury looks hard as fuck. And of course, Ken. Jesus Christ, man. What happened? Yes, easily the character that everyone wants to talk about is Ken with his new redesign. Going from a spunky young up-and-comer with a go get him attitude to someone who looks like he's at the end of his rope. Now, I'm gonna throw out a bit of a controversial opinion into the void. I really like Ken. I've been known to dabble in the Shoto archetype from time to time, and something about Ken's flashy supers and upbeat attitude always attracted me to the character. Whenever I pick up an old Street Fighter game, he's the character I generally default to because I literally enjoy his character. I originally was going to play him in 5, but with a mixture of Ken main memes and Jury being right there, I decided against it. So seeing him like this, it... it kind of makes me sad. Like, actually, sad. Ken always has been a character that you can rely on to be positive and ready to do anything. And now, he really looks like he's going through it in some of these screenshots. Like, he doesn't deserve to be sad. Ken is a good boy. Let him be a family man, Capcom. Please. That's it. That's all I gotta say. Don't let Ken be divorced, Capcom. Please. So, what do I want the game to have? Uh, Makoto, Makoto, I want Makoto. I miss her. Where is she, Capcom? Where are you hiding her? I will admit, Capcom has ticked a lot of the boxes for me with the marketing campaign, which is very good. I've obviously already discussed the way that they could use the single player mode to make you better at fighting games, which would be cool. I really think that that would actually be the best thing that they could do with this mode, honestly. And the fact that we're just getting an amazing single player mode anyway, it's kind of cool. It's kind of good. It's ticking my boxes. Now, some people People will probably say that they want the game to be free and I'm kind of on the fence about this. Like, if the game came as $60 and you had the full package of the single player, the multiplayer, and the online, I think it'd be fine. But I can see the argument of having the base fighting for free and then having the single player be like paid DLC or something, you know? I can see the argument, but I don't really think we should go down that route personally. But that's just me. Also, a beta, Capcom, please. I would actually like to try this game. It looks really good. Like, just let me play it. That'd be nice. So now that we've gone over what I want, let's go over what Street Fighter VI needs on launch. 
we have a very obvious one to talk about. The game needs to work correctly. When Street Fighter V came out, it was plagued with so many problems for casual players. A large part of that was due to the game forcing you to be connected to the servers, even when you played on offline modes. Meaning that if you were to disconnect from the server while playing offline, you would get kicked out of your match. It was not good. It was really rough. Speaking of offline modes, I'm not worried that Street Fighter 6 is going to have a lackluster offline mode because they've literally showed us what they're cooking up, but the modes need to be available on launch day and not added months later when people have dropped the game. Again, like how Street Fighter 5 did. Also, Capcom, you gotta fix the netcode, my guy. Street Fighter 6 is confirmed to have rollback netcode, but Street Fighter 5 is... Well, I mean, it has it, but good god, is it not good. The game constantly has the opponent teleporting about, even on decent connections, where other games wouldn't have these massive problems. And when you have buttons as fast as free frames coming out, you need the rollback to be good. So it better be working on launch as perfect as you can get it, or else people will drop the game really quickly. Speaking about online stuff, this lobby looks cool, but we've seen shit like this before not work out very well. Right now, from the basically nothing we know about the online lobbies, there's a good chance that they might work like an Arxis lobby. Like, come on. Custom avatar, arcade machines, it's an Arxis lobby, that's how it works. If any of you have been playing the latest Guilty Gear game, you know how these lobbies can go oh so wrong oh so quickly. Capcom, you have to make sure the lobbies don't bug out so you can connect to anyone you want and fight them easily in the lobby without the game taking a shit for a couple of minutes. I know this all sounds like really basic stuff, but you gotta realize that the most popular fighting games in the genre right now, including other Capcom titles, fall prey to these problems time and time again. Hell, I'll throw you guys another softball. Skill-based matchmaking. Preferably an ELO system. Give the gamers something to gloat about and have it so that people of equal skill actually fight each other. I've technically given an idea about this one, but if you guys aren't gonna add open world tutorial level ideas, then you gotta make sure that the game has a good tutorial on launch. A lot of new people are gonna be checking out this game, and you obviously wanna accommodate them with the modern control scheme, so do them a solid and give them an actual good tutorial that teaches them the fundamentals of the game and how to play it. I've shit on Street Fighter V's tutorial multiple times, but it deserves it because it's not good. It's really bad. If you give a new player this, they're not gonna learn any Thing. Come on, Capcom, your game looks really good. Just make sure that the casuals can enjoy it. And finally, me. It needs me as a commentator pack. I'd be really good. Like, check this out. Oh, he's shitting on him. Yes, boink on him. Oh, jeez. Is she dead? Like, like, is she okay? I think we need an ambulance. They are playing neutral right now. He's pulling his cock out.